I don't know if I'm supposed to start now. Uh, I think I'm supposed to start. I don't know if there's going to be an introduction. I'm uh, out of the office today, so I hope that uh, this works out okay. Um, good afternoon, folks. This is Larry Pesavento for the Commodity Hour for TFNN. And I think we really need to uh, say something about this uh, hurricane that's hitting the east uh, coast because it's, uh, it's big. It has the potential to be the biggest one in 120 years. I think 1888 was the, uh, the last time they had a hurricane that hit uh, with that magnitude. So uh, this can affect business. It can affect, affect crops, and it certainly affects travel. Uh, if you ever have to travel through one of these typhoons or hurricanes, you know, it's an absolute disaster, and you certainly don't want to do that uh, if you can. So let's uh, take a moment at the end of the day today or during the day and, and take a little silent prayer for these folks uh, that are in harm's way there because it's really uh, it's really tough. I have many, many friends uh, uh, through there, plus my little grandson's there in Philadelphia, but I think he'll be okay but anyway, it's a uh, it's a real bad storm, and you know who knows what happens. It could get uh, it could dissipate as it comes in, but it could get worse. Someone asked me the question of whether these uh, lunar things that we're having, uh, you know, with the uh, moon um, at perigee closest to the Earth, which brings in a lot of energy, and the fact that we have the new moon coming in on the 29th, uh, if that affects it, and the uh, the moon crossing the equator. Uh, I really don't know if that's the fact. That's not what I look at. I look at market-related things. I've never looked at the weather-related things, uh, with the exception of following the anchovy um, things down in South America, you know, 30, 40 years ago when we when they used a lot of fish meal uh, in, in feed. But, uh, fact, frankly, they use more anchovies for food now than they do in the fish meal. So uh, that's something that we want to keep uh, keep in mind. Uh, I think the commodity that we should uh, focus on uh, to start the show, and it's in everybody's uh, minds right now, and that is the, the, the gold market. Now, we, we made that three drive to a top uh, pattern up at that uh, one at uh, 1910. Uh, Steve was so kind to post that in the market uh, today and show that. And we had another beautifully uh, symmetrical three drive pattern, just the exact opposite at the bottom today at 1700 uh, that could give us a rally of uh, anywhere from $40. We've already rallied 40 so it could go anywhere from, uh, you know, say 45 to 75 to even $100 an ounce uh, because the bulls uh, in, sil in gold, if they see uh, that this could be just a, a slight sl sell-off, they'll come in and buy and get it going. But, folks, this, this wide-ranging bar, and this uh, big move down is uh, really the kiss of death uh, for silver, for gold, and the fact that we had uh, no open interest increase, uh, no volume increase, and so basically what it was was, uh, you know, n not anybody new coming into the market. We just had a few people, um, you know, leaving the market. Uh, the shorts were, uh, excuse me, longs leaving the market, but no new shorts coming in. So. That's another situation that is, doesn't portend well for much higher gold prices. So the main thing is, is with this big two down day move, we dropped $200 in two days. Uh, you realize if we went seven days, we would be down $700 uh, in, in, in gold if that could happen. And you know, these markets are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, uncomfortable enough to do that. In 1980, gold dropped from um, $700 in October. Uh, to, I believe, a half price uh, just a few months out. And in, in 1980, at the top, on uh, January the 20th, it went um, $150 up and $150 down, $300 move in one day. And that was, in, uh, that was spot gold because January was going off the board. It had no limits. And that was the start of the big, uh, you know, bear market in gold where gold went down to uh, 260 and uh, I believe this is the move ending in gold. I don't think you're going to see uh, prices in gold any higher than what we just saw right now for the rest of uh, uh, probably the rest of this decade. Now, that's a pretty uh, tough uh, statement to say, but just given that uh, that, that chart pattern, is, um, it's got the kiss of death on it. It really does. Uh, it's really very difficult to, 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 to uh, overcome that. But, you know, it, it can overcome it, but, you know, you'd have to wait and see if, in fact, this is going to be the case. 
Now, the first chart that they posted uh, on the DEN today, and I hope we saw it on Tiger TV, this is the one that we had talked about uh, on Monday, that the market had a chance to rally up to the 618, which was up in that 1170 area in the S&P futures, or it had the chance to go up to the 786, which was the uh, price we hit today, uh, just around 1188, and it still has the possibility to go, you know, one more time, you know, some type of a blow-off move to 1242, completing a huge AB equals CD. The problem with that is this, folks. Uh, we are in uh, the last two days. In fact, we're halfway through today, so we've got all day tomorrow. And all day tomorrow is going to be really tough to get anything moving because they're going to be waiting for helicopter bend, to, you know, to bring out a rabbit or something or a mouse or a uh, pack rat out of his bag and, uh, you know, try to revive, you know, things. Um, if you have a commercial question now, if you have questions, it's 8 X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end, as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story gold mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today. Click Investments and Newsletters and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Direction Shares Leverage ETFs views the benefits of exchange-traded funds with the innovation you expect from Direction, providing investors with opportunities to magnify their short-term perspective, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. Direction Shares, ETFs to the power of X. To learn more about Direction Shares, click on the Direction banner on the front page of TFNN.com or call 866-476-7523. There is no guarantee that the funds will achieve their objective. The ETFs are not suitable for all investors and should be utilized only by sophisticated investors who understand short-term trading, leverage risk, consequences of seeking daily leverage investment results, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. An investor should consider the investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus contains this and other information and can be obtained at DirectionShares.com. Please read the prospectus carefully before investing. Distributed by Foresight Fund Services, LLC. For some extra cash to help pay off some of your bills? Let Tiger Metal Exchange convert your unwanted jewelry to cash. We pay out 80% of the market price for gold. Our payouts are the highest in the industry, more than double our largest competitors. And we've created the safest, easiest, and most straightforward process for converting your jewelry to cash. Log on to TigerMetalExchange.com and get your free scale, your free eye loop, and get the cash you deserve now. We provide a free online calculator that converts your jewelry to cash at up-to-the-minute spot prices. We insure your items for up to $75,000 per shipment free of charge. We videotape the entire valuation process so that you can view it online. You can call us toll-free at 866-618-8888.
money or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. Let Tiger Metal Exchange put more cash in your pocket without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Join the list of thousands of satisfied customers and go to TigerMetalExchange.com. It's the only click you need to make. TFNN introduces Tiger TV. Tiger TV brings you video content to help you succeed in the financial markets and beyond. Investors and traders can get in-depth information, news, commentary, and education for investing and trading equities, options, commodities, forex, futures, and more. Just go to TFNN.com and click Tiger TV and select your favorite channel from the carousel on the left. Grab a popcorn and get ready for Tiger TV, a great new service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, uh, we're back, and we have a call from uh, Dante from Columbus, Ohio. Are you there, my friend? Yes, sir. Uh, the question I had is, why didn't the miners follow the price of gold? Well, I think yesterday the, the stock market... And I understand it's currency related to a certain degree, but... I, I'm not even sure if that's the case or not, uh, Dante. I think basically what it was was the fact that, you know, the Dow was up 100 and something, and it's pretty hard to be a seller when everything's going up, and so... Uh, you know, people just started to buy things, and that might have been part of it, you know. And, and remember that the, the gold, I really believe this 100%. The people that trade the gold futures have uh, very little uh, interest in trading GLD and Newmont and uh, American Barrick and some of these others. Uh, I, I, I feel very strongly about that. I might be wrong, but that, that's how I feel. I mean, this thing has been lagging behind for so long that, uh, you know, there's something not right here. And now with gold, uh, you know, rattling the water here, uh, I think we're just getting ready to see, uh, you know, I'm just waiting to see what the first correction in gold is here, and then we'll, we'll see what the next leg down is. We made three drives to the top on that 30-minute to, to, to call the top, and then the bottom down here at 1,700 was a perfect three drive to a bottom. It was the exact mirror image of the top one. I mean, if, I'm going to try to focus that over the weekend and put it in the newsletter to show people how, how one, one pattern picked the top and the same pattern picked the bottom just in, in the mirror image of it. But I, I think the main reason is that there are just different types of uh, people that are trading those stocks. Is it worth holding on to them if you have um, a small loss or just get rid of them? No, if you've if you got a small loss here, uh, you've got to be really careful. Uh, well, you've got to be really careful all the time in these markets. But if you've got a small loss, I would uh, put my stop under... Uh, you know, if cash gold hits 1,700, I would just get out of those. And if it closes badly and hasn't hit 1,700, uh, I would just go ahead and liquidate some of these stocks because some of them look very bad uh, on their own. I mean, they, they should have been going up, and uh, they haven't. And uh, that, that's not a very good sign when you've got the, the underlying product that they're selling going crazy to the upside, and yet the prices start to go down. This is what happened in 1980. We had the same type of thing. We had things like uh, Sunshine Mining and Hecla and other stocks like that that looked like dog meat. I mean, and, and yet the, 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 the metals went, went crazy. So metal, metals traders, uh, they're like horse players. They, they, they'll, they'll roll the dice on, uh, on anything, but I think stock traders, you know, put a little bit more thought into it. But uh, speculators in the... Uh, the markets are very, very uh, uh, crazy in the in the metals markets, believe me. And, and crude oil is even worse. I was just going to say, if you have time, what's your feelings in regards to the oils? Oh, I, I think the oils uh, have, have just turned down. I believe we with crude oil, it looks like it's headed, uh, you know, we hit 75 once before. That was the big ABCD. That was our first, pro, you know, our first profit, uh, excuse me, our first price objective, and we expected it to rally back to about 90. We got to 89 and change, and uh, if we go back through 75 again, uh, we're going to be looking at the mid-60s or even the low 50s in oil uh, w without too much trouble, I think, because we have lower tops and lower bottoms. It did not go along with gold this time, which is a very unusual event because they had a very high correlation up until that time. So it's telling us that 
you know, maybe the economies really are slowing down and we're not using nearly as much oil as, as we think we are. Understood. Hey, I thank you very much. Thank you, Dante, for calling in. I hope I answered it. I'm, I'm not a stock trader, but my assumption is no, how the correlation should have been different. I mean, it just if gold's at the highest, you know, the miners should have also been more positive than what they have been. They should have made new highs at least. In other words, they couldn't even, you know, take out the 61% retracements from the May high, and that, that's a very, very bad sign uh, if you're looking at it, you know, in that context. All right. I thank you. You bet. Okay. Another example, when we were talking to Dante about how stocks move, uh, today uh, Warren Buffett uh, announced that he was buying uh, Bank of America, uh, $5 billion worth of Bank of America, and uh, he spoke to one of the reporters, uh, Becky Quick, and she said he had just gotten out of the bathtub when he had this uh, idea that he should buy Bank of America. Now, now, folks, if you believe that kind of stuff, you should go right out and buy the last two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge because that was orchestrated from a long time ago, I believe. They had to have someone come in to support Bank America to say, yes, this is a great company. And what do they do? They give him a great deal. He gets 6% coupons on, uh, and he gets warrants and all the, all the stuff that's there. So, you know, don't, don't listen to that stuff. That's all baloney. I mean, if you, you let's go watch that movie. Um, I'll, I'll be back with the name of them. Come here, folks. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on lighter volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. Win free silver all summer long during our Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway. And it's my very great pleasure to announce our winner in the Great Panther Silver Coin Giveaway, Patricia Keith of Framingham, Massachusetts. Patricia, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you the kind of person that's lucky that wins a lot of things in life or not? Yeah, I do. You do? You? And what do you think you attribute this luck to? Is it good living or what? Uh, positive thinking, yeah. That yeah. is the key. Did you ever think you would win the Great Panther Silver Coin? No. No, I didn't, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. And how long have you listened to TFNN? Oh, my gosh, five years. Through Labor Day, TFNN will hold a drawing once a day, five days a week, business days only. One lucky entrant will receive one of these beautiful coins. Winning one of these extraordinary coins could not be easier. There's no contest and no gimmicks. Go to the front page of TFNN.com for more information. Win free silver all summer long during our Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York Stock Exchanges under the symbol GBG. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley of Smith Barney believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower your volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angelo O'Brien, financial advisor and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, uh, we're back. Someone uh, asked me a question if I thought that the S&P was going to make uh, 1244 uh, coming into this uh, high that we're expecting on, um, on Monday. Uh, we have one more day to go. Uh, anything could happen with uh, what's going on in uh, Jackson Hole. Uh, I don't think it'll mean anything longer term, but the market reaction could be such. Um, I, I, my my fondest wish is that we'll make a little slightly higher high on Monday, uh, maybe as high as 1,200, uh, and then we'll see uh, if, in fact, we're getting ready to go down. We should not take out the high of uh, 12.06 that was made on uh, February, excuse me, uh, uh, the 17th of August. We should not take that out. If we take that out, then I have to reconsider in, uh, if this is going to be uh, a big, big leg down. But, folks, if you, if you really want to take a look at what various charts look like, you've got to take a look at uh, the charts coming out of Europe. I mean, they really look sick. I mean, they look like pork bellies after reports. I mean, these things look like they're... Like they're dropping, like uh, you just, they're just they're just very very bad, and 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 Hang Seng index is is, is not any better, and uh, you know the Chinese market is, is not any better, and even Singapore, which has been one of the strongest, has started to roll over. So this is a global thing. These cycles that are here are are are, are attempting to you know they're manifesting themselves globally. We have a lot of problems uh, in our country and stuff, and we had a lot of problems in our country many, many years ago, one generation ago, back in the 20s. It was called the Roaring Twenties. We had prohibition where you couldn't buy uh, wine or any alcohol and stuff like that. There were a lot of you know things that were not right, and we had to go through some severe uh, contractions in order to uh, get our families and uh, people back together, and I think we're going to have to go through that again. It's just a normal thing, uh, but I believe that we're going to see it. We're seeing it in real estate in different parts of the world, um, not Hong Kong, but Hong Kong is uh, actually starting to shake a little bit. And, um, and China is already shaking. You can't get any news out of there. But if uh, the real estate market is as bad as it is in the United States here, and this is why these banks are in so, so, so bad, so, so are in such bad trouble, this is why we have, um, you know, that's one of our largest industries, and it's, it's basically dead, just like our, our car industry. Folks, I was in I was in Singapore for uh, in e Asia for 12 days. I did not see only I only saw one American car, and that was a Buick. I didn't see a Cadillac. I didn't see a Corvette. I didn't see anything. Um, that's everything was either German or Japanese. That's all. Uh, that's all. I, saw. I didn't even see a Chinese car. I saw some Italian cars. There were a few Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and uh, you know those. But uh, believe me, that they, they don't buy American. You know, I, I like Bill Crosby's idea. You know, if you if if you have to press a button for one for English, disconnect the phone. And also, his, his rule is if if we don't make it here, we don't need it. I know that uh, that would not apply to food because this is what our our show is about today is, is commodities, and I haven't you know covered them as much as I should have. But you know, the the, the grains have not reacted to any of this. Uh, stuff that happened uh, recently on the down move. The, the, the corn has gone up, uh, rice has gone up, the wheat has gone up, 
uh, all that stuff has gone up. And even and, and when gold broke $200, the grains didn't even move. We have a big, big problem feeding the world this year, folks. And if this weather coming through uh, drops some extra rain across uh, the Midwest uh, and, and damages some crops, it's going to be even even worse than uh, than we think. So there's some really big problems. This is a big storm coming across here. If this were a winter storm, you know, it would probably put enough ice in there to, you know, to make ice cubes for you know two or three years. But this is going to be a big water wall coming in, a lot of wind, and um, you know, it's going to be hard for traveling. So the economy is up a little bit, but uh, you can know, we'll see that's happening. Try to give us a call, folks, 877-927-6648. want to cover the greens a little bit so the rally back in the fencing right now. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today. Click Investments Newsletters and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighted at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. TFNN introduces Tiger TV. Tiger TV brings you video content to help you succeed in the financial markets and beyond. Investors and traders can get in-depth information, news, commentary, and education for investing and trading equities, options, commodities, forex, futures, and more. Just go to TFNN.com and click Tiger TV and select your favorite channel from the carousel on the left. Grab a popcorn and get ready for Tiger TV, a great new service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Hey, folks, we're back. And um, one of the things that I think we could all uh, learn something from today, since gold is in the, in the news, if you will go to your charts and go to 30-minute charts and go to the high that it made up at 1910, you'll see that it made three perfectly symmetrical highs over a period of about a day and a half that formed a three drive to a bottom pattern, a three drive to a top pattern. And then just today, it did the exact same thing on the downside. Uh, it had uh, these cycles went right down and stopped exactly uh, where they should have on uh, A, B equals C, D, three drive to a pattern, 
which we drive to a bottom pattern on the downside. So that's why these short-term patterns can, you know, help you pick where, you know, some of these places might, uh, you know, bounce from. When they fail, you know, they're very bad, and if we go below 1,700 in gold, uh, you know, all the bets will be off. But uh, we should get about a $75 rally off the bottom, and we're only $13 away from that right now. So we'll just have to wait and see if we do get that. Uh, I was planning on having Rich Anderson, uh, who's the commodity guy from Anderson uh, uh, Capital Management, uh, on because he knows the commodity markets uh, as well as anyone to talk about the grains, but he was traveling today, so he wasn't able to do it. So next week I'll probably have uh, Rich on, and also I'm going to have um, Arch Crawford back, I believe, on uh, Monday or Wednesday. I'm going to have try to have Arch and talk about some of the astro things because the things that are occurring with these lunar things might be, uh, you know, really big uh, to see. Um, now, the, the strategy that I'm going to be implementing because of the, the uh, date that we have coming in on Monday the 29th, and we have these, uh, these major lunar events, and there's a, there's a smaller uh, uh, planetary thing there, but the lunar ones are the ones we're watching closely. I'm going to watch the news Sunday night, and then I'm also going to be watching the spreads between, you know, the major cross rates of the euro, the pound, and the yen. And uh, and if these if these uh, uh, spreads, in other words, the, the difference between the bid and the ask starts to widen out, that means we're probably going to have a meltdown in some of these stocks, much like what's been going on in uh, Germany and in some of the other uh, countries uh, around the world. They're all in downtrends. Uh, I don't really think that the Fed's going to be able to do very much. I mean, I, they can pull a lot of rabbits out of their hat, of course, but I, I think the market is getting a little skeptical of it because, uh, you know, all they did the last time was, uh, you know, shore up the banks, and now look what's happening to the banks now. The banking index look, looks terrible. Even with, even with Buffett coming in with his uh, $5 billion today, uh, you know, they still uh, have rallied a little bit, but, you know, they're, they're way down in the, you know, the bottom part of it, you know. So um, we've had a sell-off in bonds. Uh, basically, they went up, and there was a huge AV equals CD up there at that uh, 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 one, uh, excuse me, one, 141. I keep forgetting that the numbers are getting so big anymore. But we had a big ABCD uh, on the weekly chart at the 141. I tried the TBTs twice. I lost a couple of points on both of them. I'll be looking to get back in those again. But, you know, bonds are nothing more than an asset class, just like gold or anything else. And I think a lot of these things are going to be uh, under a lot of pressure. And uh, so this is what, uh, this is what my, uh, my trading plan for Sunday night will be to watch what the spreads are doing in the uh, currencies and I want to be uh, selling some uh, S&P uh, futures contracts if we get a, a higher opening up into that uh, above 1180 if we, in fact, get back there. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is the 25th, and this is a big anniversary date, folks, as we, we talked about yesterday. Um, this was the top of the market in 1987. We came down into uh, the 26th of September, from August 25th to the 20. 6th of September, we came down and we rallied up very strongly to a perfect 61% retracement on October the 2nd of 1987. And from October the 2nd, 1987, to October the 19th, 1987, those uh, 13 trading days, the Dow Jones uh, dropped 33%. Uh, and it went down and stopped at the exact 61% retracement of the low from August the 9th, 1982. And from that level, uh, the next day, the 20th, uh, Greenspan opened up all the vaults on Wall Street and said, just start buying stocks. And the market went up and, you know, made new history, historic highs up around uh, 14,000, which was the, the high for the, for the big move. And uh, we'll, we'll see what, what happens with some of these things. I, I believe, you know, Bernanke, has always, uh, his greatest fear was he didn't want to be, you know, the Fed chairman over a... Uh, another depression, and don't forget, you know, if you're, some of your greatest fears become realized if that's what you focus on, and I think by him keeping rates this low for this long, it's going to really not help business because the, the, the banks are not borrowing money because people are not expanding businesses with employees. You need employees to get out there 
and get jobs. And, you know, I, I, I read something yesterday I couldn't believe, and that is General Electric is moving all of their X-ray stuff to China and building a, a multi-billion dollar plant and hiring 15,000 Chinese people and doing the work in China because it's cheaper. If that's the case, you know, there ought to be some tax implications for that. I mean, give me a break, folks. We can't keep doing this. This is what Ross Perot said when he ran for president many years ago. He said, you're going to hear uh, about this uh, job thing that they're doing, and he says it's going to be a giant sucking motion. He said, all of our jobs will be going out of the country, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, who knows? Another thing about uh, you know, our, our famous president, his, his uh, economic advisor is none other than Franklin Raines. And Franklin Raines is the man who basically broke Fannie Mae. And anyway, when he took over, the stock was about 75. When he left, it was about 1. And he got a, a, a golden parachute package of $240 million. Uh, fortunately, Congress took $50 million away from him, but he still got $195 million. And now he works uh, for the president as his chief economic uh, advisor. And so, you know, I don't, oh, I'm on my salt box really bad today. This is not good. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, let's 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 go back to where we what we should do. Um, in fact, I'll be on the air on Monday. We'll be able to have an idea of where we are. We got. I think we have a commercial coming up here now. Seven seven nine two seven six four eight. Studies show that 10,000 hours is what it takes to achieve outstanding results, unless you use the power of leverage. The power of leverage, folks, is key to attaining outstanding success in your trading and investing. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, and author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter. Let me take your trading to a new level, a whole new level. Let me teach you the secrets that the real money masters use each and every day to produce consistent financial results. On top of that, I'll transform your life in ways you never thought imaginable. You'll overcome hurdles like an Olympian. Here's the beauty. I'm so certain that I'll transform your life. I'm giving you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Time, folks. Something you'll never get back. The time is now to take action. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and order Mastering Probability. It'll change your life forever. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom 
and technical trading skills of the technology insider David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a technology insider today. You've heard Bud Rolfs give his expert technical analysis of the stock market on the radio. Now you can have his superior trading advice and his best stock picks delivered right to your desktop every week with his newsletter, The Torch. Using his own trademark Warpath trading system, Bud will help you to increase your odds of making and saving money in the markets with powerful stock selection, stock analysis, and trading plan strategies. Published every Monday morning, each issue of The Torch features full-color charts in an easy-to-follow format. You will also receive not only the big picture of what's going on in the major markets and critical sectors, but also featured stock picks with complete trading plans and technical setups, as well as the Subscribers Corner, where Bud analyzes stock submitted by subscribers. Visit TFNN.com today and receive your two-week free trial of The Torch. That's a $75 value. Sign up now and make sure you receive all the great market analysis and winning trade ideas in every action-packed issue of The Torch from Bud Rolfs. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. My new book, The Art of Time in the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, is for sale at Amazon.com for only $18.40. Now. Back to the Futures Hour. Hey, we have a call from Al in Oklahoma City. Are you there, Al? Yes, sir. You're a great show as always. Thank you. What can I do for you? Yes, Larry, I wanted to ask you, if we go back and test the, the August 9th lows and then bounce off that one more time, what would that be telling you? They're telling me that Larry has more fear than he'd want to have. If we go down there and test it, uh, uh, I, I don't have a lot. If we if we test it on that Monday, uh, then I would say yeah, I would be I would be willing to step in there and and cover some shorts. But frankly, we've we've tested it three times now, and usually the fourth time you go through it. So we'll just have to wait and see. The real key thing to watch is the August twenty seventh, two thousand and ten. We've already broken through that on the banking index and the financials. So that's telling us that we're under some pressure. But we need, uh, if, if, this, if, if our analysis is correct, we are going to have one big blockbuster day on Monday, and the odds favor a down move. It doesn't look good. No, it does, especially with that storm. That storm could be the real kicker. Yeah, today's mar uh, action in the market is telling me some, uh, it's just not looking good at all. Now, I was telling you that in Europe, too, and also across Asia. Hang Seng was down 500 yesterday, and uh, everything's supposed to be good over there. So, Anyway, I've got one more caller here, Al, so I'll talk to you next week if you can call in, okay? Thanks, Larry. Thank you, my friend, for calling in. George in Tampa, are you there? Yes, Larry. Thanks for taking my call. What can I do for you? I'm looking at um, getting back into physical silver. I just wanted to know what you think it would be going down to. Well, uh, if, if I'm correct, we should see gold at around 1565, and uh, so I would wait at least a week or so uh, to see what's going to happen. Silver's been much weaker uh, than gold all along, and so if gold does break like we think it's going to, uh, the percentage on silver would, would might be a little bit less because we have more speculators in gold now than we do in silver. So I would say if you could get silver you know, somewhere around 29 or 27, that would probably be a pretty good spot to, you know, at least open the door, you know, with a protective stop, of course, but that's one of the objectives that I'm looking at in silver is around 27. Okay, because I was looking around 32 to 34, so that sounds even better. Well, you might be correct, but it's got to get to 32 before it gets to 27. It's how it gets to 32. Right. If it's 32 too fast, it's going to go to 27, so... I think the time is what you want to – don't worry so much about the price. You know, worry about the time. Cause so we should be down at least three weeks because uh, we went up parabolic in gold, and parabolic moves take at least three weeks to assimilate, just like we did in silver. Remember, we went from the 24th of May, uh, April, you know, all the way into the uh, end of May to make that 28% correction. We should be doing the same type of, uh, same type of move. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, my friend, and let's make a little prayer for everybody today uh, for, the, for the storm because it's going to be pretty tough and many lives are going to be changed. And if you're in an area where your life has not changed, you know, try to help somebody if you can. 
And, uh, you know, that's about all we can do. Um, I'll, I'll, if you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you cannot, you won't. But if you'd like to win and think you can't, it's almost the perfect that you will not. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. And that man's name is Tom O'Brien. Thanks, folks, and we'll hope to see you uh, on Monday, God willing. <laughs>